Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode of Setup Wars. The first 500 of my subscribers to use the link below will get a two month free trial. Yes guys, I know, trust me. I know the Nanoleaf panels in the back are not symmetrical. I know there's gonna be a bunch of people in the comment section. What are you doing with Trust me, I know. And the reason why is because it's missing a few panels. I've ordered them, they're coming, and once I install them, they're gonna be perfectly symmetrical. But I did change up the background a little bit in case you guys haven't noticed. Number one, I installed more nanoleaf panels, of course. Number two, that cable running down from one of the panels is no longer there because I know it's driving a lot of you guys crazy. Trust me, it was driving me crazy as well. I took care of that. I moved it all the way to the, the far left side. So that, that way you guys can see it. And finally, I added three LifeX RGB strips underneath the wall just to kind of give it a nice glow. But uh, yeah, so far I think it's looking pretty good. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. This is a long intro, let's just let's just get started. Uh, welcome to Set of Wars episode 158, which means there are two more episodes left for everyone's favorite episode, the worst setup edition. But anyways, uh, yeah, with that said, let the Set of Wars begin. I do want to give a huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, and pretty much anything you can think of. I know you guys like my PC build guides, but there is a class on there that actually goes more in depth on how to design and build your own PC. What I like about this course is the fact that he goes over how to select your parts and he explains everything in detail. So not only do you learn the process of building, but you also learn how to troubleshoot PCs if problems arise. The premium membership gives you unlimited access to courses like this, so you can join the classes and communities that are right for you and your new year goals. It's also really affordable. After the free trial, it's just less than $10 a month. The first 500 of my subscribers to click on the link below will get a free two month trial. We haven't seen a music production setup in a while on the show, so we're gonna kick off the episode with a beautiful one from Alexei coming from New Jersey. Other than music production sessions on his Twitch channel, he uses this setup for gaming. I really like how he made good use of the space with all of that gear. He built a riser using the IKEA wall shelf for both of the Dell monitors, and he even installed a pullout drawer underneath the desk for all three of his launch pads. For peripherals, he's rocking the Cooler Master Keys Light L keyboard and mouse combo. You know, despite having a pullout drawer under the desk, you can still drill a hole for the keyboard and mouse wire. You just have to use a cable clip to keep the wire against the desk. But I'm assuming he didn't want to cut a hole in his mouse pad, so it's all good. Placing the speakers on those stands is actually a great idea compared to mounting it on the wall because they won't interfere with the acoustic foams. By the way, side note, I really like the design and I'm also impressed that you're able to keep those foams so white. Usually they turn yellow after a few weeks, so you got some really good ones there. Sandwiching both monitors is the complete audio interface, which has the MXL 770 microphone hooked up to it using the Rode boom arm. And underneath the desk, we got a pair of Audio-Technica M40Xs. Cables are managed beautifully using a couple sleeves to wrap the cables going into the cable box on the floor. Although I'm curious as to why that one cable is not included inside the sleeve. The rest of the cables are routed through the channel raceway and we have a bunch of cable clips helping out. Down here is the PC, which has a 6700K, 32 gigs of RAM and the Zotac GTX 1060. I like that you made an effort to keep with the white and black color scheme, like adding a GPU backplate with white fans, but there are some other things you can do to spice up the PC, like SSD covers, custom sleeve cables, and of course, an AIO sleeving kit for the cooler. If you do end up spicing it up with those, I do recommend removing your PC from the ground and placing it on an Alex drawer next to your setup. Otherwise, it kind of defeats the purpose of having a see-through side panel if it's just gonna sit underneath your desk. You know, I really like all the small modifications here and there to make everything accessible and convenient. I think you did a great job building something that works for you and what you do. Well done and thank you for entering. Coming in hot from the dark side is Hans and his epic triple monitor setup that he uses for pretty much everything from gaming, productivity, editing, and crypto mining. That's right guys, this is technically a dual setup. The left PC is actually a server with a Ryzen 3 and an EVGA GTX 1080, while the other PC has a 6700K, 32 gigs of RAM, and two EVGA GTX 1080s. 
So we have the Acer X34 in the center, sandwiched by two 27-inch BenQ monitors, and they are all mounted against the wall. But what I want you guys to look at is how he routed the cables because he did such a clean job. So he basically grouped all the wires using Velcro straps and he ran them across the wall and straight down behind the Alex drawer. The rest of the wires are channeled through a couple raceways and since both of the PCs are hooked up to the same monitors, he has a port switch under here so that he can swap his mouse and keyboard with a click of a button. Speaking of which, I would rather run the mouse wire underneath the keyboard since you already drilled a hole in the desk for it, but it's not a big deal. Picking up a few stands for your phones would also be a great idea instead of leaving them flat on your mouse pad. This way you're also able to look at notifications as they come through. There's a bunch of them on Amazon that can do the job, but here's one that costs $15 and it can hold two phones. You can actually place this underneath your monitor in the center since you like to keep things symmetrical anyways. I'll drop a link below if you want to check it out. And finally, for audio, we only got a pair of Mackie CR4 speakers, just barely making it on the desk. You know, it's always recommended to position the speakers at ear level, so I do recommend picking up stands like these, which will help lift the speakers 9 inches off the desk. And you can even use these isolation pads to prevent distortion, but they will also allow you to pick from 5 different angles. Once again, I'll drop a link below if you want to check it out. He did include pictures of his old setup and it's quite the improvement over the time, but I'm confident with some more minor tweaks, you can improve this setup even more. Thank you Hans for entering. Shutting down the gears a bit, we got a super clean and minimalistic setup by Luciano. He uses this for gaming and productivity. I'm assuming productivity is priority because of the ultra ride. Unfortunately, it's capped at only 60 Hz, maybe 75 if you can overclock it. For peripherals, he's using the Logitech G810 Orion Spectrum keyboard with the G502 mouse, and I just love that little hole he drilled for both the cables, and he even covered it. Very clean. For audio, he's using my favorite pair of speakers in the world, the Edifier Eclipse, and he was smart enough to pick up the HD version. Nice. He does have a gaming headset as well, the G933s which are hanging underneath the desk, and take a look at the wire management, ladies and gentlemen, if this doesn't give you any wood, I don't know what will. First off, he has a cable tie on the left side holding up the wire for his headset, and moving over to the opposite side, we can see a memory card reader for easy access, and towards the back, are music to my ears. I love what he did with the channel raceway. It's actually really smart. So instead of installing one large raceway, he picked up three individual ones, or maybe he cut them into three pieces, I'm not really sure. But this way, he's able to route the wires in between each one instead of having the wire go over the raceway. I gotta give you mad props on this method. It looks way cleaner. Also down here, we got the PC powering it all, which has the 7700K paired with the Gigabyte GTX 1080 and 16 gigs of RAM. One thing I would recommend is to bring the GPU to the top PCI slot just to make sure you're using the full potential of that card, but you might have your reasons for keeping it down there. I do, however, like that you put something underneath your PC instead of leaving it on carpet like I see people do so many times on this show. Also, I just realized where the hell is everything plugged in? I don't see any wires anywhere. What sorcery is this? Is there an outlet underneath your PC? Because I do see a cable going in there, and I do see a cable going underneath your door, which is then plugged into the outlet on the other side, but I could be wrong. The only minor thing I would recommend is raising the speakers a little bit. Now, because of the color scheme you got going on, I do recommend you do something like my setup back at home, where you can use IKEA wall shelves and capital legs to raise them up. But like I said, it's not a big deal, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to drill holes in that beautiful desk. Oh, and don't think I didn't see that entire shelf of Predator collectibles. It's pretty obvious whose side you're on. It's nice to take a break from the crazy setups and look at something super clean and minimalistic. Thank you, Luciano, for entering. Well, that didn't last long. Back to crazy setups. Now, this one is from Nawar, all the way from Israel, and I'm so sorry if I butchered your name. Can we just take a moment and look at the wall-mounted PS4 Pro with both of his controllers? Alright, so this setup is used for gaming, streaming, and programming, and it's got an interesting setup with three displays. So we got an ASUS 34-inch ultrawide in the center and a secondary monitor towards the left. It looks like both of them are mounted against the wall and they're being used with the PC. The 50-inch TV from Samsung up top is used for console gaming and most likely watching videos. Below all that, we got the add-on unit from IKEA, which looks to be kind of supporting the monitor's weight, but surprisingly, the desk is not bowing, even though it's got a Linman tabletop. 
So the add-on unit is great for additional storage, plus it can prop up your monitor if you need a monitor riser. However, in this situation, I don't think it's that useful because the left drawer might have some clearance issues with the keyboard, so you can't even open it all the way, making it somewhat useless. But the right one should be fine if you move the mouse around. I'm digging those custom white keycaps on the Corsair Strafe keyboard, by the way. I think those look very clean. All right, so for audio, he's only got a wireless headset from Logitech, which I'm assuming is used mainly for the PS4. However, I don't see why he can't use it for his PC as well. Either way, I do recommend picking up some speakers for this setup at some point. You can even put them next to your monitor. These over here cost $22 and they have really high ratings on Amazon. And I think they go really well with your setup. So the acoustic panels kind of seem out of place and I'm assuming you put those there to cover up the cable raceway and maybe add some spice to the setup. But to be honest, it's kind of looking a bit bland going across like that. Maybe go with some sort of a design like the first setup and you can also pick up the white and blue foams so that it matches your setup colors even better. I feel like the black kind of sticks out the most since your setup is mostly white. Cables are managed fairly well thanks to the Signum rack, so there's nothing really to complain about here. And finally, the PC powering everything is a dope looking water cooled rig. It's packing the 8700K, which is delitted by the way, and overclocked to 5.1 gigahertz. Damn. Uh, we also got 16 gigs of RAM and the EVGA 1080 Ti FTW3. Now that right there is a beast. Now here's one thing I would do differently if this was my setup. Now, obviously white is the most dominant color here and because of that, the black case seems out of place. I would have gone with the white version of the Crystal 460X, which I think personally would have looked so much better with the blue coolant and the black fittings. You could have even gone as far as to replace the black fittings with white ones if you really wanted to stay consistent with the color scheme. Now this way it would be a white and blue setup with minor black accents. But anyways, that's just my two cents and everyone has their own preference and taste. Either way, you got a killer setup there. Thank you, Nayor, for entering. And again, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Wrapping up the episode is Warley and his anime-themed setup rocking three LG monitors that are mounted on the wall. He uses this setup for gaming as well as photo and video editing. The desk is made up of the IKEA linen top and two DIY cabinets, one of which has the PC inside. And my first reaction is, I hope that PC doesn't have high temps because there is no exhaust on the top for the hot air to escape. Despite the front being open, I don't think it's an issue considering the specs, but you know what, I gotta point out those awesome RGB fans. And you might ask me, Ed, what's so special about those fans? Well, for starters, it has an RGB ring on both sides. Let me repeat that, guys. Both sides have RGB rings, and I've never seen that on a fan before. So regardless of how you position it, you're gonna get that RGB goodness. Sadly, these are not available in the US. Why hasn't Corsair thought of these already? For peripherals, he's using the Kimat X2 keyboard and the Talon mouse. Both of them are from a company called Rack, which I'm guessing are from the Philippines because that is where Warley is from. For audio, he's got a pair of Logitech Z213 speakers and the Razer Kraken Pro V2 headset. He does have a siren microphone from Razer as well, but it doesn't seem to be a part of the setup. I don't know, maybe he's waiting for a boom arm or something. There's not much going on in this setup for me to recommend changes. It's pretty straightforward. I would try and put the PC on the right side of the desk because it does look like there's enough room. And also, if you're going with an RGB build with tempered glass panels just to put the PC underneath your desk, then what's the point of even having it? Pretty simple setup. Thank you, Warley, for entering. And that does it for this episode of Setup Wars. As always, make sure you guys vote down below in the comment section on which of these setups is the best. It's actually a pretty tough episode, so let me know what you guys decide. I'll announce the winners, as always, on my Twitter and InstaFail accounts. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like if you liked the series and a dislike if you didn't, and I will see you in the next video.